Okay, one more sentence for the intro here. Through their consequential characterization, I don't know, I don't really like consequential, that feels a bit random. Through their characterization and unique world building. Now, again, I said avoid the word end just a second ago because you're kind of limited in just, just to these two things, but that might be okay. I think it, often when you say the word end, you can you find that you can actually merge the two things that you've kind of compounded like that. So through their characterization of unique worlds, you know, through their characterization of a unique world. So instead of saying end, you actually connect the two. That's a really important tip. So again, we'll say through their characterization of unique worlds. Now, unique worlds, by the way, is a very generic concept. I'm just working with what you have here. This is very generic. Uh, try and be more specific about that. What do you mean unique worlds? Just vague statements like that uh, can often just be omitted, are better off being omitted and you just go straight to the point. Guys, be straight to the point, be specific. William Shakespeare is the Merchant of Venice. Now you underline that in your, if you're writing this out in an exam, make sure you underline it. If you're submitting it as an assignment, then you can italicize it, okay? Underline if you're gonna do it in the exam because obviously it's hard to show italics in a written paper. You should also have, I mean, a date for Shakespeare, it's never exact, but if you could have a rough date there or even the era, maybe hopefully at some point you say like Elizabethan era, I think you should do that. And you haven't actually said the play, right? You don't need to say William. Shakespeare is so dominant, so alpha in the literary world that you don't need to give him a first name even when you first say it. Although you should do George Orwell, right? I think Shakespeare is the only one who's really earned that, that right at this point. Okay, so Shakespeare's Elizabethan play. Always good to, if you can weave in a bit of context and form there, we, we should know that it's a play. You should tell us that. You could even say, you know, it is kind of a comedy, it, but it's an atypical comedy. So maybe that that's such a nuanced point that you probably wouldn't bother with that. Here, you just say Shakespeare's Elizabethan play, The Merchant of Venice, and George Orwell's Animal Farm. Now you're merging them straight away. Provide deep insight into the way marginalized, the way that marginalized individuals manipulate others to maintain some, okay, See, now you're getting into it. And to me, that's a really nice conceptual statement about a flaw, okay? But also this is now sounding like it could have also been your first sentence because you've grouped them both together. You've grouped them both together and you're repeating the marginalized point. I feel like you should then have a sentence on the Merchant of Venice or you can have a clause like this. I see how you've done that. And then you can have a clause on Animal Farm or a sentence on Animal Farm.